In this example, we shall use a given true airspeed of 180 knots, a wind velocity of 070 at 40, required track of 030 degrees true, and we need to find what our drift is as well as the heading to steer and our ground speed. There are a couple of steps that you can follow in order to get the right answer every time. First, before we start, we check that we have the correct wind scale or the correct wind plate installed in our CRP5. And we know that this is the correct wind plate because given a true airspeed of 80 knots, the fastest we can ever go would be uh, if we have a full tailwind of 40 knots. Remember, the wind velocity is 070 degrees at 40 knots. So 180 plus 40 gives me 220 knots. So the maximum speed that uh, this aircraft is going to cover over the ground is going to be 240. So we have brought the 300 knots maximum wind plate into our CRP-5. On the opposite side, we have a wind plate for speeds up to 1000 knots. So we won't use this side, we shall use the one that says 300 on the top. Now many people recommend setting the TAS first. Uh, I believe that setting the wind into the CRP should be the first thing you do so that you're not worried about having to shift your TAS later when trying to plot the wind vector. Uh, ignore these little blue blobs over here. Uh, that's some blue tag that I use to keep a plastic sheet on my CRP so that I can use a marker on it. Right, so step one. Check that we've got the right plate in. We've checked the maximum ground speed we can have. We have the correct plate. Step two. We are going to set the wind into the CRP. And the wind velocity we were given was 070 at 40 knots. So I'm going to have to plot a vector that comes from a heading of 070. So I'm going to shift my inner scale till I have 070 lined up. And this is the direction the wind is coming from. Wind will be blowing from 070 at a velocity of 40 knots. So I need to count off 40 knots on this scale. And the easiest way to do that is to count the squares. 10, 20, 30, 40 should be there. So, and I'm going to push down on my CRP5. You can see that when I push down on, on the, the face of the CRP, then my little cursor mark uh, sticks to the CRP and I can see exactly where the spot is. Okay, so I've got 070 and 40 knot vector lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny dot right down here. 70 degrees, 40 knots, 10, 20, 30, 40. And I'm going to put a little dot right there. So this little dot is the end of my wind vector. My wind is actually coming from this direction. Okay, and it ends in this little red dot. Step three. Well, our true airspeed is 180 knots. So I'm going to move this cursor all the way up to 180 knots. And 180 is up there. So I'm going to move the plate so that 180 and the cursor are lined up. Cursor right on top of 180. Again, we need to push down on the face plate so that the cursor shows up nicely right on the dot. I've got 40 knots at the end of this dot and I've got 180 knots. So if I was flying actually on a heading of 070, flying into the wind, and the wind was 40 knots, then it would reduce uh, my true, uh, would reduce my ground speed from a true airspeed of 180 knots 
it would slow me down by 40 knots my ground speed would actually be 140 which you can see clearly over here because I've got a direct 40 knot headwind so if I was flying in this direction and the wind was coming at 070 at a speed of 40 knots well it would reduce my ground speed by 40 knots so as I'm trying to fly in this direction well the wind is pushing in the opposite direction and it will slow me down by 40 knots next I'm going to set our desired track into the CRP and our desired or required track is 030 degrees true which is over here now you've noticed that the wind vector has shifted from this position off to the side and basically that's telling us that if we were to fly on uh, a heading of 030 then the wind coming from 070 would actually blow us in that direction so we would go off by this amount and if I push down on the faceplate I can see that's about uh, nine and a half degrees to the left How do I know it's nine and a half degrees? Well, uh, that's ten. And that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a little bit more, almost reaching ten degrees. So that's about nine and a half degrees. And what that means is that if we were to fly on a heading of zero three zero, we would go off course by about nine and a half degrees. And we would be blown port side because left of an aircraft is port. In order to counter this drift, this 9.5 degrees of drift, we need to turn the aircraft into the wind. That means we need to turn our airplane in this direction a little bit so that we don't drift off to the left. By how much should we turn the aircraft? Well, we're drifting 9.5 degrees port, so we should turn 9.5 degrees starboard. So we're going to turn our aircraft to face into the wind by about 9.5 degrees. And 9.5 degrees would be 39.5. Now I'm going to shift 39.5. When we shifted our hitting to 39.5, you will notice that that little vector point has also shifted and it has shifted about one and a half degrees off uh, from nine and a half degrees of drift to eight degrees of drift. We've kind of lost one and a half degrees there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put back that one and a half degrees and I'm going to put it back over here. So I'm going to go back by one and a half degrees. It's half and that's one. And you notice that when I did that the end of our vector still stayed at 8 degrees. So basically what we have done is we've balanced the drift. So the heading to fly now will be 35, 6, 7, 8, 38 degrees. Why? Because I've balanced my drift. And without moving anything, we can also obtain our ground speed. Our ground speed is obtained by looking at where the wind vector ends, this little dot, and it's lined up just below 150. So this line, this wind line of 150, well, it's just below that. Um, counting up from 140, every square is two knots, 142, 144, 146, 148, and a half. So that's 149 knots. Our ground speed would be 149 knots. And that's how we obtain our drift, heading to steer, as well as ground speed.